Hello and welcome to ACE Courses video series on polycystic ovary syndrome, PCOS or PCOS. This is the third video in the series. The first addressed the diagnosis of polycystic ovary syndrome. That is the three pillars and the three steps of PCOS diagnosis. Make sure you go and watch that. The second video looked at the various risks and consequences of polycystic ovary syndrome. We looked at the five domains, didn't we? Namely, reproductive risks, metabolic risks, dermatological risks, psychological risks, and long-term risks. In this video, we will dive into the management of reproductive risks. You will remember the five reproductive risks from polycystic ovary syndrome from one of the previous videos, namely anovulatory infertility, miscarriage, preeclampsia, fetal growth restriction, and preterm birth. Let's now look at how you can manage anovulatory infertility. There are many options, but we need to take a systematic approach, don't we? The first step is always to optimize lifestyle and preconception factors. Then we have the first line treatment, second line treatment, and third line medical treatment for PCOS related anovulation. Let's start with optimizing body weight and preconception health. A patient with polycystic ovary syndrome and anovulation should generally aim for a body mass index less than 30, but in actual fact, the target for the woman should be particularized, it should be tailored to her needs and preferences. So have a discussion with her about what is possible and what is reasonable in terms of weight reduction. Aiming for a 5 to 10% weight loss over six months is considered reasonable. Then let's move on to exercise. The recommendation is 150 to 300 minutes of exercise per week, which translates to approximately half an hour per day, and that is what is recommended. Now, what's important is that a single bout of aerobic exercise should be at least 10 minutes. Exercise and diet combination works best when it is supported with appropriate behavioral strategies. The important issue here though is that lifestyle goals should be co-developed in partnership with the patient who's got polycystic ovary syndrome. I mentioned behavioral strategies. These could include goal setting and self-monitored problem solving. Now let's move on to medical treatment, which as I mentioned is organized as first line, second line and third line treatments. Okay, let's start with first line treatment. What is recommended as the first line treatment? Well, the recommendation is to use letrozole as the first line treatment. When you are using it, make sure that the woman is ovulating using ovulation tests. And if she isn't, then you can increase the dose appropriately. Generally, patients will get up to six cycles of treatment with letrozole. Another option as first-line treatment is the combination of clomiphene and metformin, which is thought to be better than just clomiphene alone. People worry about fetal risks, fetal anomalies related to the use of letrozole or clomiphene. But when you look at the current evidence, the evidence is that the fetal anomaly rate associated with the use of these two drugs is no different to what you would expect from natural conception. Let's now move on to second line treatment. The second line treatment that is recommended for anabulation is gonadotrophins, that is FSH. Now this should be used with ultrasound monitoring to avoid multifollicular development and the risk of multiple pregnancy. The idea is to start with a low FSH dose 
and use what's called a step up protocol where you increase the FSH until you get the desired ovarian stimulation. The aim is, of course, monofollicular development to reduce the risk of multiple pregnancy and OHSS. Now, up to two follicles is fine, but if you have three or more follicles, which are 14 millimeters or more in diameter, then there is a real high risk of multiple pregnancy. So if you have three or more follicles that are more than 14 millimeters in size, it's best to cancel the treatment. Finally, let's look at what is the third line treatment. The third line treatment for anovulation related to polycystic ovary syndrome is, unsurprisingly, IVF. IVF is a very effective treatment, but it isn't without risks. The main risk in the context of patients with polycystic ovary syndrome is the development of a potentially serious condition called OHSS, which is ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. To mitigate for this, a GnRH antagonist cycle could be used. Mild stimulation with stepping up of the dose of FSH is preferable and very careful monitoring is needed to make sure that there isn't excessive ovarian stimulation. A new technology called IVM, in vitro maturation of the oocytes, is also a possibility. Now, there are two important outputs that we are waiting for in terms of guidance. One of them is the NICE fertility guidelines are going through updating at the moment, so you need to see what they say about management of patients with polycystic ovary syndrome with regards to infertility. The second is a large multicenter UK-based clinical trial called the LOCI trial. This trial, which is a 2 by 2 factorial design trial, is looking at the value of letrozole versus clomiphene with and without metformin. And the findings of this would be very important in terms of guiding future practice. So that's how you would manage anovulation related to polycystic ovary syndrome. Now we must remember there are other reproductive consequences to polycystic ovary syndrome, including miscarriage, gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, fetal growth restriction, and preterm delivery. There is also an increase in cesarean section in women with polycystic ovary syndrome. There is some evidence that metformin in the first trimester could reduce the risk of miscarriage in women with polycystic ovary syndrome. And we are awaiting the results of loci trial to give further information on this. In terms of mitigating the risks associated with other complications of polycystic ovary syndrome, you should make sure that the patient has her blood pressure monitored, has OGTT at the right time, that is preconception, and also between 24 to 28 weeks of gestation, gets the appropriate lifestyle advice, and of course has appropriate antenatal care. That brings us to the end of this particular talk. You now know you have some idea about how to manage polycystic ovary syndrome from a, a reproductive point of view. Women and couples should be given the good news that although there are all these reproductive problems, there are many solutions in terms of trying to help them achieve their dream of having a baby. On that positive note, let me conclude this video. I hope you found this video useful and I hope you find the other videos in the series useful too. Until we meet again in another video or at the weekend course, goodbye.